The UH-1H Huey was the first flight sim helicopter I learnt to fly in DCS, and one aircraft I felt had been sorely missing from Microsoft Flight Simulator. There have been a couple in the works from different developers for a while now, and when I saw Tag had released theirs to FlightSim.to, I picked up as soon as I could and took it for a test drive. Taug also made the Alouette 3, which I was a little slow on the uptake on due to various real-world excitements in my own life, and only picked up when it came out in the marketplace, and I have to say I was impressed. But the Huey has always held a special place in my heart, because it's the helicopter that gave me my love for helicopters. And this had the potential to make me fall in love with it all over again, or be bitterly disappointed. So, no pressure then. In this video, I'm flying the 205A1B, which is the civilian version. When you buy this module, you'll get the civilian aircraft, a high skid version, and the military UH-1H. I was going to use the UH-1H, but it had some different add-on options, and it didn't include the water tank, which I thought looked fun. But flight-wise, I can't say I've noticed any difference. Sitting in the cockpit feels very reminiscent of the DCS Huey, with the exception of a considerable graphics upgrade. This isn't meant as a criticism of DCS, in many ways it's a very different simulator, and while it has its own strengths, Microsoft Flight Simulator has always won out when it comes to looks. Everything in here feels very crisp and clean, the gauges have nice big numbers that are easy to read in VR. There's loads of great details, and I particularly like the little hula girl on the dash, you can't beat a classic. And I like the wear and tear on things, that war look really adds to the realism. Unfortunately the breakers are just decorative, but other than that, pretty much all the knobs and switches work. And of course there's a tablet to configure a helicopter for flight, which you'll find stashed away next to the co-pilot seat. As with other modules, this tablet allows you to enable the various add-ons, manage different features of the aircraft, and open and close the doors. We have doors open and close as you'd expect in an aircraft of this calibre, or they can be removed completely, so there's nothing between you and that fantastic sounding rotor chop. The winch outside is a nice aesthetic, but as far as I'm aware it doesn't currently do anything. And you can open the engine bay from the tablet to get a look at that single turbine engine, which while of no practical use, is a pretty cool touch. and we have full mechanical animation. This is always something that makes me happy. Even though you never get to see it when you're flying, I do find it oddly satisfying, and is usually a good indication that a developer is paying attention to the details. The livery textures do get a little blurry when you get right up close to them, but if you're flying with your face pressed close enough to the metalwork to notice, then you probably won't have to fly like that for very long. It'll all be over soon. However, when observed from a sensible distance, it looks pretty damn fantastic. Okay, time to get down to business. Now in this flight we're going to take off, pump water into the tank from a nearby body of water, and deploy it over a target area. However, water is heavy and so is fuel, and I'm afraid it's a case of one or the other. To keep the Huey below its takeoff weight when we fill the water tank, we can't have more than 30% fuel or we may not get airborne again. Unfortunately there's no actual fire to put out, so we're going to do the responsible thing and dump it on the unsuspecting public. We also want to make sure we have the water tank equipped, which it is. However, not all add-ons are compatible with each other. For example, you can't have the water tank and the Bambi bucket, and if you want to go surfing afterwards, you'll have to come back and drop off the water tank first. On the other page we can enable a GPS tablet, which is quite useful, and we can turn off the vortex ring state effect if we feel the need. More on that later. You can convert the cabin into a medical cabin for those SNR rescue missions, and there's an option for modern avionics if the 60s helicopter feel is a bit dated for you. Personally I prefer the traditional look, it's much easier to read in VR. You can also turn off damage on here if you're not entirely confident in your helicopter flying skills, and if you do damage the aircraft without completely destroying it, you can repair it here too. If you're familiar with the DCS-UE, then the startup is pretty much identical. 
The controls for the lights and the pitot heat are towards the back of the overhead panel. Set the AC power select to AC, DC power select to essential bus. Check your generator switch, this appears to be on by default. And check your inverter switch is off. And when you're happy, turn on the battery and the helicopter will start to make an annoying noise. Don't panic, it's just a low RPM alarm. You can turn it off with the switch next to the fuel valve on the centre pedestal. While you're there, turn the fuel valve on too. Check your force trim and hydraulics are both turned on. Now I'm just going to hide the crew so we can see the collective. Set the throttle to the start position and press the starter. We need to hold the starter for around 5 seconds, which is awkwardly underneath the collective, so I suggest binding it to something. Once the engine starts, you can start to slowly roll in the throttle and watch the gas pressure build. Unlike the DCS version, the gas pressure needle won't start to move until you release the starter. Once things are running, double check your generator and switch the inverter to main. I always toggle it the wrong way first time. You can also set your DC power to main gen, although I don't know if it makes any difference. And we're ready to go. I just want to bring your attention to this water gauge that appears when you enable the water tank. Its function is fairly self-explanatory, but it will be important later on. The Huey twist to the right on takeoff, so you'll need to be ready with the left pedal. Lift the collector slowly and make adjustments to the cyclic as needed as the helicopter gets lighter on the skids. Now I want to turn to the right so I have the length of the field to take off in, but I slightly overdo it with my rotation. It's easily corrected. It just looks a bit rubbish. I'm still getting the hang of holding this thing in a hover. But now we can build up some speed and use transitional lift to get us in the air. The first job is to find a body of water, and there appears to be something off to my right not very far away. Flight wise this feels quite similar to the DCS Huey in how it behaves. The flight dynamics can be tricky, but they're also responsive and won't spin you out of control for no reason, but equally don't make you feel like you're playing an arcade game. We can see the river up ahead, so it's time to start slowing down. Approaching to pick up water is just the same as approaching to land, just without the landing part. In order to pump the water in, we first need to deploy the hose. This is controlled with the Toggle Logo Lights key binding. Once deployed though, you can't stow the hose again without using the tablet. This seems quite reasonable, as the hose is stowed with two loops on the back of the helicopter. So, unless the co-pilot is willing to climb out under the skids, you'd have to land to stow it again. When you get below 15 feet, the pump will start automatically, as indicated by the green light on the water gauge. 
this is where your hover skill is put to the test as you have to hover for a couple of minutes while it pumps in the water. You need at least a quarter of a tank to be able to spray. Ok, I've skipped forward a couple of minutes and the tank is about three quarters full. That should be enough for this demonstration. Let's get back in the air. As the tank fills with water the helicopter will get heavier and you'll need more collective to maintain a constant height above the water. Or if you touch down very gently you can kind of land but some might consider that cheating. I might have cheated slightly. This is like my third time flying this thing. However, being heavier, a transitional takeoff is definitely the safer option to avoid overstressing the engine. The more observant among you may have noticed that my master caution light has been on this whole time. That's because I forgot to clear it before I took off. You can clear it using the caution reset switch on the centre console. Okay, now I've got an almost full tank. Let's find a target to deploy it over. Up ahead is a small town of people no doubt struggling with the summer heat. So, let's make it rain. Spraying of the water is bound to the toggle taxi light -like switch. If you set up a key binding for press to start and release to stop, you can hold the button to spray and release the button to stop. However, the whole tank empties in about 4 seconds. That's 2 minutes of precision hovering for 4 seconds of release. Feel free to make your own real world comparison. As there's an option to disable vortex ring state on the tablet, I thought I'd try to see how much VRS affects this helicopter. For those who may be unfamiliar with VRS, in very simple terms it's what happens if you descend directly downwards too quickly and get caught in your own rotor wash. That you then can't recover from simply by raising the collective again. It's very dangerous but can be recovered from if you have sufficient altitude and you know what you're doing. Which is why I've climbed up a bit. I've reduced my speed to a hover and I've tried ditching the collective so I start to drop rapidly. This should put me in VRS, but when I pull the collective back up the helicopter recovers without me having to transition out of it. I would expect to continue plummeting to the ground until I pitch forward or sideways to get out of it. However, this is the norm for most helicopters in Microsoft Flight Sim, so I'm not going to let it bother me. Now this module comes with some pretty good documentation, and when skim reading through this caught my eye. Of course, as soon as I saw aerobatics are prohibited, there was nothing I wanted to do more. Okay, so there are some alarms and caution lights, but nothing broke and no one died. So, is it love at first flight, or am I heartbroken never to love again? Well, it's early days in the relationship, but it's looking promising so far. Sure, I had some of the usual shortcomings that go hand in hand with Microsoft Flight Sim helicopters, but this is so nice to fly and it looks amazing. I've only touched on one of the add ons here, and there are different configurations available for the different versions of the Huey, and I haven't explored them all yet. In conclusion, I think I'm going to be spending a lot of flight hours in this thing. I'd definitely recommend giving it a go. It's available now on flightsim.to, and I would imagine it will come to the marketplace eventually. Till next time, fly safe.